So we've all heard of some Excel calamities when things have just gone disastrously wrong in Excel. Well, I couldn't believe that there was an article in the Times newspaper just a couple of weeks ago here in the UK about three Excel disasters. In this video, we're going to cover what happens in these situations and some practical tips for you, tips and tricks to stop you ever being in this situation. And we're going to discuss whose fault is it? Is it the fault of the software? Is it the fault of the user? We're going to cover that too. If we're meeting for the first time, a big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I'm a real world consultant, content creator here on YouTube. And if you need an Excel course, we've got a free one right here on YouTube. It's called 30 Day Excel Analyst. It's for you, your colleagues, your mum, your dad, whoever needs an Excel course, 30 day 30 minute sessions, the link is in the video description below. So let's get into the article, three Excel calamities. How can we stop these happening to us? So number one, there was some hand wringing at MI5 in 2010 when the government admitted that a formatting fault, a formatting fault on an electronic spreadsheet had led the security service to tap 134, 134 incorrect phone numbers. So you might be aware telephone numbers in Excel are kind of tricky. So what are the easy things that we can do to make it easier? Well, this is likely to happen if you just try to input a phone number to Excel. I'm going for the UK format here, 07700, 700, something like that. And what we'll find is we lose that leading zero. We lose that first zero. So what's the easiest way to deal with this? Just go for an inverted comma. You can see the inverted comma in the cell there first. So 07,700, 700 again. And I can see because of the inverted comma, Excel has recognized this as text and we've retained that leading zero. So that's the easiest way to do it. Use that inverted comma. But I would encourage you to take things to the next level and to use data validation. Data validation, the most underutilized feature of Excel, it can avoid so many problems. So click on a cell, uh, go to data, data validation, and just have a look at the options. Have a look at the options in the data validation dialog box. In this case, I've set up a text length because here in the UK, we've got 12 numbers, characters uh, in the phone number. So I can ask for 12 characters there. We can also set up an input message. So when you click on the cell and you can see the input message visible on the screen now, we're giving the user useful information about what needs to go in the cell. But there's more than that. We can also customize the error alert. So if something goes into the cell that shouldn't be in the cell, the user is gonna get some useful information to help direct them. So I'm gonna click okay there. So if I put something I shouldn't put into this cell, and hit enter, you can see I've got an informative error message telling me what to do. I've also got a message in the cell above the cell giving me some direction here so I can now go ahead, type in the phone number, let's do something a bit different here, one, two, three at the end, and you can see that's successfully gone in. Right, let's move on to calamity number two. So what happens? The unwanted files were hidden from view in the Excel file, but reappeared when an employee converted the file format to PDF and sent it to be filed at court. So this is about Barclays Capital in 2008. They accidentally bought a load of assets from Lehman Brothers who were already bankrupt, saving a huge amount of money. So what seems to have happened is Somebody's hidden a row. I'm going to go ahead and hide this row here. Alt H O U R on the Windows PC. Then they've converted to a PDF. I'm going to do that now. I'm interested to see. You can see row five is hidden. The number three is hidden. I'm interested to see if we convert to PDF, um, does that row come back? So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, just hit the F12 key on the Windows PC. Going to hit PDF here and I'm going to call it telephone numbers and PDFs three. You can see I've been doing my practice. I'm going to hit save and I'm just interested to see what does this PDF uh, look like and can we see those hidden rows? So here's the PDF. We can't see those, those rows. So that row did remain hidden. So I'm a bit doubtful about this one. How did this one actually happen? Because when I save as PDF, that row has behaved, if you like, and that row has remained, remained hidden. So I had a look around on the forums, couldn't find any ideas, but then I got one idea myself, which is could have been some VBA, could have been some VBA misbehaving. 
And if we go into the VBA editor here, if you click on this workbook and then select the workbook option, you're going to be able to access all of the workbook events that would allow you to trigger a macro. Now, I generally don't recommend triggering macros from workbook events. It's much better to trigger macros from button clicks. But you can see you've got an option here. So a macro could run before the file is printed. And remember, when you save into a PDF, you're basically uh, printing the file. So I'm going to switch this code back on. And this is the code to unhide the rows. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Back to the spreadsheet, I can see row five is hidden. I'm going to hit the F12 key. Once again, uh, save as a PDF. And then what's going to happen? I've got PDF, save. Um, and let's save to telephone numbers and PDFs four here. Click save. What's going to happen? Well, I can see because of that VBA code that's running in the background, I can now see that row has become visible and opening up the PDF, uh, we can see that row has become visible again. So you let me know in the comments, is there any other explanation for this? All I can think of is perhaps there was some VBA code in the file and it unhit the row before that PDF was created. What do you think? Let me know uh, in the comments. So thirdly, in 2005, Kodak overpaid a former employee severance pay by $11 million because the wrong formula was applied. A spokesman said it was definitely unintentional. Not too bad, is it? Not too bad, is it? Being overpaid by several million dollars. What might have happened in this instance? Well, one thing that came to mind for me was we can control how uh, cells display in Excel, of course. And we can do something like this. So in this cell, you can see over in the top right, we're actually displaying the number 1,061,050 here. But because of the formatting in the cell, we're getting rid of some of those uh, numbers at the end to simplify what's in the cell. And we're only showing a few figures. So how do you do this? Alt H O E on the Windows PC. And if you go ahead and type this in, as a custom format, you'll be able to do this too. So you, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, over type this. Uh, let's type in 1000, for example, I can see 1000 there, but in millions, it's 0 0.01 million. So once again, I couldn't think of many explanations here, but this is one possible explanation. Was there some funky formatting, formatting on the cell that caused this error? Again, let me know in the comments, what do you think? But what do we think? More generally, these calamities, they're clearly very serious. Companies using millions of pounds, people's careers ending perhaps because of this. But whose fault is it? Whose fault is it actually? Now, a second article uh, in The Times is kind of a, a love letter to Excel, and I think it's really quite soft on Excel, uh, if you like. And one of the quotes is, but the fault lies with human hand-eye coordination rather than the algorithm, which does what it's built for. So it sounds to me, you're very much blaming the user here. And is that fair? Is that fair? Because, you know, the first time I went in and did a proper job, I had access to Excel. I had access to the VBA editor, but I had absolutely no training in those things. It's a bit like, learning to drive in a Ferrari using Excel for the first time. We know it's got all this power, but we don't have the training. We don't really have the knowledge, the ability to harness that power. You know, we saw uh, earlier in the video, you could have VBA code running in the background. In our case, we were just unhiding a row. You can delete files uh, with VBA. You can delete files with other tools such as Power Automate. So I don't quite agree with the end of the article that it's always the user's fault. Rather, I'd like us to have a better understanding of the need for better Excel trading, trading and maybe a few more, few more guardrails in Excel uh, to kind of support the user and to ensure that these Excel calamities and disasters don't happen. Really interested to hear what Excel calamities do you know about? Let me know uh, in the comments below. This is Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. Thanks so much for watching. The next video to watch is right here.